How much do you know about protozoa? Protozoa are microscopic single-celled organisms which usually live in water. Using a new high-definition television system with a differential interference contrast microscope, we've recorded several types of protozoa for study. This is Amoeba proteus, one of the largest protozoans found in fresh water and the most commonly studied. It can be up to half a millimetre long. A distinguishing feature of this organism is the way in which it continuously changes shape. This is what gives it its species name, Proteus. Amoeboid movement is always associated with a substrate and involves cytoplasmic streaming. A tube of endoplasm is squeezed forward along a pseudopodium lined with a gel of cytoplasm. Each species has its own characteristic movement pattern. Normally, an amoeba requires a surface to crawl on, but when it's suspended in mid-water by currents, it develops a characteristic stellate shape. Amoeba proteus captures other protozoa, like this paramecium, for food. The amoeba will engulf an individual by extending its cytoplasm to cover the prey. Eventually, the cytoplasm totally surrounds the paramecium and fuses around the victim. In the lower left corner, we can see the cytoplasm fusing to form a food vacuole in which the prey is digested. This is an amoeba capturing a paramecium bursaria. The paramecium clearly shows the green symbiotic algae, chlorella, within its cell. This individual is a heliozoan, otherwise known as a sun animalcule. The numerous projections around the cell are called axopodia. These are characteristic of all heliozoans. Each axopodium contains a bundle of microtubules. These give the axopodium rigidity, but allow it to contract rapidly. The surface of each axopodium is sticky, and this is used to catch prey. When a victim is caught, the microtubules within the axopodium break down. As a result, the axopodium contracts. Eventually, the prey arrives at the surface of the cell body, where it's engulfed by cytoplasm using a mechanism similar to that of the amoeba. The contraction of axopodia when feeding is generally slow, but the axopodia are capable of much faster contractions. Here, the surface of an axopodium is artificially stimulated. The heliozoan reacts with a rapid contracting action. Didinium is a ciliate which has two rings of cilia. These can beat in either a forward or a backward mode. This organism feeds on other ciliates like paramecium. These are literally harpooned by projectiles called pexicysts, 
located in its proboscis. These are coils of protein which discharge explosively when the didinium contacts its prey. Here, didinium has swallowed a whole paramecium. It can be clearly seen inside. Paramecium swims by the coordinated beating of approximately 10,000 cilia covering its body surface. It collects bacteria via a gullet into food vacuoles where they are digested. Here the paramecium has ingested carmine, a red pigment to make the food vacuoles stand out. Food vacuoles form at the base of the gullet and move around inside the cell, digesting the bacteria. Undigested particles are pushed out of the cell from the cytoproct. Unlike amoeba, paramecium is able to reproduce sexually. This process of sexual reproduction where two cells fuse together is known as conjugation. The large objects seen in the centers of the cells are called macronuclei. During conjugation, the macronuclei disappear while micronuclei remain. Following meiosis and fertilization, the micronuclei form a new macronucleus. This is conjugation of Paramecium bursaria. Within the cell, symbiotic green chlorella again stand out clearly. Tetrahymena is smaller than Paramecium. Tetrahymena is a useful organism for observation and molecular biology experiments because it's easily grown in large numbers. In this sequence, the cells are going through binary fission.
Tetrahymena also reproduces sexually. Here are the conjugants connecting at the cell ends. Conjugation is now commencing. The micronucleus in the cell elongates and starts to change into a crescent-shaped form. The next stage is meiosis, and the cells prepare for fertilization. After meiosis, the nucleus divides once more within the cell. The nuclei of two cells meet through the attached part of the cell walls. This fusing of the nuclei is the fertilization. Then the cells separate and start to exist independently. This is a bell organism or vorticella. Some species of vorticella exist singularly, others are colonial. This is an example of a singular vorticella. Each vorticella has a stalk which contains a contractile mechanism. Here the vorticella is undergoing cell division. The cell remains attached to the end of the stalk. After the cell divides in two, one leaves the stalk and settles elsewhere. Immediately after it settles, it begins to form a stalk of its own. Another type of bell organism is the Carchesium, which, like some vorticellids, is colonial. Each Carchesium cell is connected to another by a stalk. The cell group can move, expanding or contracting as a single unit. These are protein fibers which are contracting inside the sheath of the stalk. Here are further examples of ciliated protozoa. Here is a species which has bundles of large cilia on its surface. These cilia are used either for catching food or for movement. At first, this organism may appear to be an underwater arthropod. However, it is actually a highly developed unicellular organism with a complex structure. This is Euplotes, seen through a phase contrast microscope. Notice the unusual T-shaped nucleus. The microscope is now showing the cilia under high magnification. The bundle of large cilia is clearly visible.
This is Spirostomum, a large protozoan measuring one millimeter over its body length. It appears to be a multicellular organism, like a nematode, but it is in fact unicellular. This is blepharisma, which contains a red pigment. It's been found that conjugation in this creature is induced by a sex pheromone. Here we have Euglena gracilis, another species of protozoa. Notice how it propels itself with beating flagella. The chloroplasts inside the cell allow it to carry out photosynthesis. Note the red pigment shield and sensory spot on the base of the flagellum. One of the marine flagellates which cause pollution is the protogoniolax, a dinoflagellate. Some dinoflagellate species cause a type of pollution known as red tide. Here are some other species of marine flagellates. Gymnodinium nagasakiensi. Aristodiscus luteus. Chattanella antiqua. Heterosigma akashiwo. We've seen numerous types of protozoa in this recording. The study of these organisms is fundamental to a thorough understanding of biology and evolution. Detailed examination of these basic life forms continues to provide valuable information for scientists and researchers in their work.